Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, the other day I did um, change the spark plugs on the Nissan Altima, and when I pulled the ignition coils out, uh, I pulled this one and noticed, I don't know if you can see, the oil. Oil. It'll focus. So, there's obviously an oil leak here. Um, it's not uncommon for these Nissans to leak oil uh, around the ignition coil gaskets. The little rubber gasket inside of there and it it's not uncommon for it to leak. The rest of the gasket isn't leaking, it's just leaking right there. So what it's doing is it's it's pushing oil down into that cavity and it goes down and gets on top of the um, spark plug. Uh, and then eventually works its way down the threads into the cylinder head so you can start burning oil. Uh, fortunately at this point I'm not burning oil uh, I just noticed this the other day, and it's not bad. It's 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 just a real gradual leak, but there's definitely oil on it. So uh, what I'm going to do is fix that. The rest of them were all good. It's just that one that was uh, a problem. So these are the spark plugs I took out, and I can find the one. Yeah, this is the one that had the oil on it. It's kind of hard to camera won't focus on it but anyway like you can tell the difference between some of the other plugs uh, on top here um, they look a little black you know from the carbon or whatever which is normal that he's got about 90,000 miles on them um, but what the big difference is is like it's black but it looks dry kind of like a flat black this was black and kind of glossy so that and you can see the oil on the threads itself too and some of where the oil was sitting on the porcelain so you know you've got oil inundation uh, into that cylinder so uh, what we're gonna do is fix that now the problem with these Nissan valve covers is right here this is this is a new uh, valve cover this is from Nissan itself these will begin to leak and it's front side it's this one that's leaking on the car um, so you can buy these little grommets separate, but getting them in there and getting them to seat properly sometimes is a pain in the butt. So what I did is I just bought the new rocker cover, valve cover gasket. Thing was like 40, 50 bucks, something like that from the Nissan dealership. Uh, it doesn't come with your oil fill cover. It does come with a PCV valve, which is good. Uh, and that's basically it. That's all you get right there. Plus these. You do not get this gasket. You have to buy that gasket separately. I bought that gasket. Um, uh, There's probably a part number on here somewhere, but it's pretty common. There it is. Uh, I just bought it at AutoZone. Uh, that came from the factory or from a Nissan dealership, which there's the part number right there for the rocker cover. Like I said, I think I paid 50 or 60 bucks for it. So, uh, you can get them cheaper, but this one's from Nissan itself. It's an OEM part, so probably better off to go with that one. So, what we're going to do is we're going to replace that whole uh, valve cover um, assembly gasket and everything. So, what I did is, first step, of course, unplug your battery, disconnect your battery. Uh, whenever you're working on any part of the system that is electrical, you want to always unplug the battery. Uh, and then plug it back in let the car do the relearn after you fixed everything But unplug the battery first and then I had to put the car on jack stands because the car is entirely too low To put a jack underneath it <coughs> because what you're gonna need to do is put a jack and Something soft like a piece of wood or something on the oil pan You see where I got it right there uh, This will support the engine while you do this job because You'll have to remove this, which is your one of your main motor mounts. It connects here to a motor mount and here as well. So this all has to come off in order for you to get the valve cover off. So right now the engine is supported from underneath. So we can go ahead and start pulling that. Um, unplugged all of the ignition coils. You're going to pull the ignition coils out uh, and then disconnect these two grounds here that are running over to your alternator and kind of move this wire out of the way. This one you won't be able to move out of the way. It's gonna stay right there because it goes back to the injectors. But uh, that right there, 
goes in that hole. So you got to kind of get a little screwdriver under there and work it a little bit, work it, work it. It'll, it'll come out eventually. Try not to break it because you'll want to connect that back on the new one once you put it in. Uh, that you have to remove your PCV hose. Uh, be careful when you're using this and these get real brittle and uh, you, you can't break the hose and then you have to buy a new freaking hose. Uh, and then of course the oil vent hose that goes to your intake. This is a aftermarket short ram intake but you'll still have the same one on uh, the factory air box. Um, so, so far that's all the prep I've done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start taking the rest of this down and uh, I'll come back and show you kind of what that looks like. I mean, all this, your your alternator bolt's gonna have to come out because this is attached, or you can just detach this and try to flip it up so you don't have to remove that alternator bolt. I think that's what I'm gonna try to do. But uh, you're gonna have to take these bolts, this one, that one back there, uh, this one here, that one there, and that one there. Uh, when you take that one, loosen that bolt as well so you can swing that a little bit out of the way because you're gonna to wanna to pull this up and then out. Um, loosen these bolts too as well so you have a little bit of play in it so you, you can move it around, it doesn't stay rigid and then it's harder to work with. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that. Uh, we're gonna pull all of the ignition coils out. These are just 10 mil bolts. Um, pull all the ignition coils out and then get started on this over here. All right, the motor mount is out. That piece just connects on right there. Those are all the bolts. You got two long ones that go clear through it down into the engine block itself. And then you got a couple of short ones that go here and connect to this one right here. So that nut was on the, was right there. Goes right on there. Um, there's a nut for it. Right there. That one was a little bit more tricky because it doesn't have a lot of room to work with. So what I ended up doing was removing the um, power steering reservoir. All you gotta do is, there's a little clip right there. Pull that clip out and this thing will slide right up off the top of there and then you can just let it kind of sit there for now. But the engine's supported. Uh, we took the motor mount off. All I had to do is take these bolts out. We didn't have to remove this mount for the alternator. We didn't have to take the bolt out for the alternator. So that's good to go. Um, and I just went ahead and put some duct tape over those holes for now to keep any kind of dust and dirt or anything from falling in there while we're working on it but as you can see the rest of the gasket is good um, there's really no leaks anywhere else it's just around that one ignition coil so what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove all these bolts All right, so valve cover's off. There's your cams. And this is the one that it was leaking on. When I pulled it off initially, a little bit of oil comes off, you know, because there was oil on the top of the valve cover gasket, but you could see where the oil had been coming in around here. And it was kind of like running about halfway down here. The rest of them just had a little bit of oil right near the top, but that was it. So that was definitely the problem. Um, and the leak was coming from the top. Don't believe the leak was coming from the bottom. I mean, you can still kind of see, see if I can get a light in there. Still kind of see oil down in the bottom of that sleeve. Cause then there's none down there. But there's a little down in there. It's having a hard time focusing. There we go. So you can see a little bit of oil down in there. Uh, so the oil's been running down in there and sitting. And starting to get into the cylinder because of that. So we're gonna go ahead and replace it. Uh, meantime, what you wanna do is, so uh, when you're taking the valve cover off, you don't necessarily have to do it if you're replacing the whole valve cover. I mean, you can if you want. It's If you're replacing, if you're gonna use the same valve cover, start by loosening this is exactly how it sits on the car. So looking at it from the front of the car, you start by loosening that bolt into that one. Then here, here, or there and there, 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 there. So you're gonna start from the outside and kind of work your way in 
taking those bolts off if you're going to replace if you're going to reuse it if you're not going to reuse it it doesn't really matter i mean you can beat the hell out of it just trying to damage anything underneath um, pull the bolts all out and i recommend putting the the new valve cover next to it and just as you pull the bolt out of one end you put it right in there where it goes in the other and that way you, you don't get confused they're all the same they look like all the same bolts but you know it just helps to have the same ones back in and I noticed taking it out that there was a little bit of maybe it's like a gasket maker on it and when I get it off I notice I got a little bit of leftover like somebody made a gasket or he used a, like a gasket maker whatever silicone or whatever you always kind of want to use them in the corners right here because this is where it has one of the hardest times uh, sealing for the new gasket but just use a little bit just a dab don't use a whole lot because uh, you don't want a double gasket double gasket makes it leak so um, make sure that you scrape all the old stuff off before you put the new um, valve cover on uh, don't scrape too much you don't want to scratch this just lightly Try to take that off with like a plastic putty knife or something. That way you don't damage your, um, you don't damage the metal. It's got it here too. Uh, a little bit back there. And of course a little bit over there. They always do the corners. So I'm going to do the same thing when I go to put it back on. I'm going to clean this up real good. Um, try to avoid getting any dirt. I mean, it's because of that same, but try not to get any of this dirt in here. Because you don't want dirt inside there to wear out your the metal in there a lot faster. Um, while you're in there, it's always good to take a quick look and make sure that there's nothing that really stands out and looks damaged. You know, major wear on parts or it just looks like parts have been stressed or, you know, just overused. And stuff like that comes from the machining process of building the, the actual cam. These aren't high performance cams, so they're not going to be super polished and, you know, you, you're going to have marks like that from where it was, where they tooled this thing, so... Just make sure you ain't got any major damage. You're not missing any of these bolts that are holding on your uh, your camshaft guides. And look, make sure your your bearings aren't poking out. You know that the cam itself isn't damaged, uh, and that you're not looking like you're pushing oil anywhere else. It's also a good time to check the back in here and be sure you're not you don't see oil leaking out there because if you do, you might have a blown head gasket, and that's a whole another ball game to worry about. But Everything looks good. It looks just looks like it was that one thing that's bad up here. So uh, we're going to clean it up. Um, make sure we don't get a whole bunch of crap inside of it. And then get the new valve cover gasket back on it, or valve cover and gasket back on it quick uh, to avoid this being exposed to the air for too long. Uh, you never know what's floating around in the air these days. So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do that. There's the new one getting ready to go in. I got the gasket already pushed into place in the bottom. I'll make sure you get it seated real firm in there. And uh, again, we'll go through the uh, putting the silicone on the uh, cylinder head before we put it back together. Uh, this is the old one. Uh, this is just how it would sit on the car, like the front of the car is towards me. And this was the bad boy that was leaking. So I'm gonna flip it over right quick and take a look at it. It's hard to tell that you know there's any real problem with it. It doesn't look damaged. I mean, it's they all got a little bit of oil on the inside there, but it's not enough to where it started making it leak. And part of that was from the process of taking it off. You know, it's, it's gonna get a little oil here and there, but that was definitely the one that was the problem and was causing the leak. Doesn't feel, feels a little rough around that one edge right there. And maybe that was where it was pushing oil. Feels kind of rough right there. So maybe that's where the leak was, but whatever, like I said, it's cheaper to, and easier just to buy the whole valve cover than it is to try to go out and buy these little grommets and then try to get them in there, especially those, because it's all plastic sealed freaking thing. I don't even know how to get that apart without breaking it. So yeah, so let's get the new valve cover. It's like 60 bucks from Nissan dealers. I mean, you can get it easier or cheaper online, but I would recommend just getting the OEM. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to get this thing cleaned up and get the new one ready to go on. Okay, <clears throat> this is what we used, or what I used, the Ultra Black RTV. It's good for oil. Uh, and what I did was a little glob there, glob there, glob there, glob back there. 
one in each of the four corners. The gaskets should seat really well everywhere else. It's just the corners that always give it trouble. So you want to make sure you get a little bit in there, not a whole lot, just a little bit to kind of help out that um, help out that gasket a little bit. <clears throat> so everything's cleaned up. Uh, we got all the old gasket off of it, scraped it all off. Everything's cleaned up. Everything looks good. New gaskets on. New gaskets clean. Now what I'm going to do now is go ahead and wiggle this thing back in here. You're going to get it over here, and you're going to bring it in underneath this wire. This wire is kind of a pain in the butt here, uh, but you're going to kind of easily wiggle it, finagle it up underneath there. Try not to let it rest down on top of everything until you've got it, you know, where it's supposed to sit. Then kind of push it down on there a little bit because these these rubber grommets right here will fit nice and snug over these uh, over this metal right here. So uh, kind of weasel it in there a little bit and then push it down to snug. Uh, we'll go through the torquing procedures, but what we're going to do is since we put the RTV on it, that stuff has got about an hour cure time. So I'm going to put the valve cover back on. I'm going to push it. I'm going to hand tighten all of these bolts. I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, torque them yet. I'm just going to hand tighten them down. In uh, the sequence that we're supposed to tighten them in, you generally tighten from the middle and work your way out. You know, kind of like a like a spiral all the way out. Uh, but I'm going to just hand tighten them, and I'm going to let it sit for about an hour. I'll let that valve, that that that, that RTV, kind of get a little bit uh, tacky, and then we'll go through the torquing procedure and torque everything down, and uh, then we should be done. Uh, one one other thing, it goes without saying that don't work on this thing when it's hot. Um, you're working with plastic and aluminum, and they tend to get a little funny when it's hot. So make sure you let the car cool down all the way. Besides the fact of burning yourself, I mean whatever, but don't don't work on it when it's hot. Uh, aluminum acts funny, and so does plastic when it gets hot. Uh, when you start tightening stuff and untightening, so yeah, it goes without saying, don't work on it while it's hot. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> the valve cover is back on. Um, got it wiggled in there. I mean, you can do it without having to release that. It might help a little bit because you might be able to get a little bit more play out of it, but it's still connected up here. So you're not going to get a whole hell of a lot out of it. You just have to kind of work it in with one hand, lift up with the other, try to wedge it in there a little bit. Try to keep it up off of everything if you can when you're sliding it in so that you don't unseat your gasket. If your gasket falls off, best thing you need to do is pull it back out put the gasket back in and run it in there again um, some people will tell you to put silicone on the gasket so it sticks to the valve cover I don't recommend doing that um, like I said you end up with a double gasket double gaskets a no-go um, it's better to just press it into the little channel because it's got a little groove in there I'll, let's see if I can show you on the old one uh, I can get this thing loose because it's 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 in there now so I mean it's been a while. Can't even hardly get this thing off. It's hard to do with one hand. Oh, you can see that. Hang on. So, this is what I was talking about. <clears throat> There's a little cavity right there. A little groove. And the gasket just goes, sits inside of that. Where the hell I got this thing on backwards? Doesn't matter, it's the old one. But just to show you. See, like. It has a little groove that slides down inside of there, right? So it'll hold on while you're putting it back in. When I was doing it, the whole thing didn't fall off at all, which is a surprise because usually stupid crap like that happens to me. And it seems like it's a little bolted out right now, but all I've done is hand tighten these bolts. Uh, I haven't torqued them down yet, right? So I just put them in by hand, tighten down by hand. <coughs> you, you have to torque these twice anyway. So uh, I'm just going to let that little bit of RTV I put in there kind of get tacky. I'm going to give it some time, and then we'll torque everything down. Um, I put the bolts in, and I tighten them up with that, like just hand tighten them, you know? And I didn't go, I mean, like I didn't tighten it any more than that. Just kind of hold it on there in place right now. Um, you always want to put these bolts back in by hand. Start them in by hand. Uh, that way you know if they're cross-threading. You use a, a, a drill or power tools immediately, you're going to cross-thread something. 
you know, it, it's inevitable. You're gonna cross thread some shit, and then you're in, then then you really messed up your block. So I always do it by hand. Just tighten it down by hand. Uh, when I got it on there, I had to kind of push down a little bit because you see these uh, sleeves for the spark plugs and the coils. The rubber gasket sits around it and then slides down over it. You can see it. Yeah. And it kind of slid down over those. And on this one, that is where the leak was coming from. It was coming up the side out of here somewhere in between there and pushing over. So hopefully this fixes that problem. We don't have that issue anymore. It should be nice and clean down in there like that. This camera's horrible. There we go. Yeah, whatever. But yeah, so we'll go through the torquing procedures next. Um, just the sequence that you're going to torque them down in because you want to make sure you get this thing torqued right. And like I said, you're going to torque it twice. So uh, don't worry, I'll put all the torque specs and everything in the description. Okay, this should be about it. Um, put the bracket back on, uh, tighten the bolts. One, two, three, four, five. Just start here, go around in a circle, end here. Tighten your, mat, your bracket to the engine. Put this on the bracket that goes to the motor mount. Put the bolts in, don't tighten them all the way down, just hand tighten them down. Then torque your bracket. Then torque these bolts. Then torque here and here. So these guys, all these all these uh, bolts are 30, 36 foot-pounds. These are all 37 foot-pounds. That one is 76 foot-pounds. And that one is 63 foot-pounds. After that, connect your those two ground wires back in. Plug your mission coils back in. Make sure you got all the hoses and everything plugged back in. Um, then make sure you rehang your uh, power steering reservoir. Just like that. Back in. That's done. Um, yeah, that's it. The only other thing left to do now is to plug the battery back in and turn on the car. Um, what I did is I kept the engine supported. I, I put jack stands under the engine as well. I jacked it up enough to get a couple of jack stands to sit up under the engine to keep it just in case the hydraulic jack decided it wanted to be an asshole and fall on me, like slowly lose pressure. But uh, so I put two jack stands under here. I'll take you down here, show you where I put them. So, one of the jack stands I put right there. I think you can see that. Right, I put it on right there. Just beside the oil pan, I had the jack under the oil pan, and I put the other jack stand here to support the transmission. And then I was able to let a little pressure off of the oil pan so it wasn't just sitting on there the entire time I was doing the job um, once I got ready to tighten down the motor, motor mounts I jacked the engine up just a little bit removed the two uh, jack stands and let the engine down just slightly and that's just to help you kind of align your uh, all your bolts up on your bracket and your motor mount uh, once those bolts go in and you torque them down you can take the jack out from under the vehicle you might need to let the engine down a little bit here and there just to get everything to line up but you shouldn't have to mess with it too much everything should line up pretty well you don't really need to jack the engine up very high to do this job um, like jacking it up a half inch is good enough to get the pressure off of this motor mount so you can do the job but uh, once the jack's out everything's out go back through and check your torque one more time and be sure that everything's torqued down right go back over and make sure you plugged everything back in um, that you didn't leave any tools laying around in the engine in the back anywhere uh, make sure everything's clear clean off all your tools and stuff from around the engine bay uh, and then plug your battery back in uh, check the oil make sure it's got enough oil in it. you shouldn't have lost any oil on this job but just be sure you got enough oil in it uh, 
crank it up, let it run for a few minutes, let it get up to idle or uh, running temperature, um, and then see if you got any leaks. All right, last thing we're going to do is go through the tools, jack stands, use the hydraulic jack, a little wood block. Use 18 mil crescent wrench or box end wrench, 10 mil. Uh, pry bar, there's a breaker bar, torque wrench, leave some quarter inch, three eighths, and half inch ratchets, um, pliers, the RTV used on the gasket, the silicone, 10 mil socket, damn, where is it? There it is, 10 mil. 13 mil, uh, 9 16 16 mil, 18 mil, uh, various extensions to get in and out of there. Uh, a little screwdriver, a little flat tip screwdriver. Uh, other than that, I'll put everything else in the description, torque specs. I'll even throw some links in there to um, torque specs you can find online tightening procedures they're kind of the whole job you can find it online uh, that you can read through I just give you a video to show you kind of what you may not be able to figure out just by reading it I have a hard time reading stuff and comprehending I'd rather see a video but that's it that's the valve cover gasket on the or valve cover and gasket on a 2012 Nissan Altima 2.5 four-cylinder thanks for watching